My name is Andrew Tomlins, the Commercial Director at Intelligy, and I have with me one of my colleagues, Liam Harrison, who is our Intelligent Process Automation Practice Lead. So just to give you an overview of IntelliJ first, very quickly, one slide about this. So we are a leading UK-based technology provider. We're based in Sunbury on Thames near London, and we were founded over 20 years ago in 1994. We have 35 staff, and we are a proud holder of a, a gold Microsoft, Microsoft partner accreditation. We have five specific areas of expertise which we have very deep knowledge of and they're around information management and governance intelligence process automation obviously platform services applications and modern workplaces so just to set the scene within the construction sector um, i've been doing some research around productivity in particular and i'd like to sort of raise this um, point from McKinsey research it highlighted that there was a, a lagging productivity gap in the construction industry to the tune of 1.6 trillion dollars per year globally and 460 billion of that was due to European construction now productivity gaps could be bridged in many ways and uh, my research suggested some fascinating ideas that one day may truly transform the industry and these are what I would define as tomorrow's world's inventions and includes some things such as exoskeletons, robotics, 3D printed houses and autonomous vehicles to name but a few. But today I want to focus on the technology that's available now and these can significantly improve the efficiency of the construction industry. Uh, things such as VR design, holographic headsets, thermal imaging, 3D printing and specifically cloud computing with things such as mobile apps and these are used by people in the field and the office and I, yes i know this might feel like a just another form of digital transformation that everyone's talking about at the moment but this is not new this is proven field tested technology that has genuinely improved the business of one of our customers so talking of digital transformation this is where Microsoft has assessed the construction industry to be on their digital transformation journey. You can see on the far left there, it says not quite started. Um, that might feel a little harsh to some of you, uh, but it's obvious, uh, there might be some extenuating circumstances for this. There's, uh, companies are focusing on delivery of projects more than innovation, but there, as I say, there is obviously some big advantages to be gained by companies willing to embrace change. I'm going to, hand over to my colleague Liam now to give you a flavour of the sort of thing that is possible. Thank you very much Andrew. So as Andrew mentioned my name's Liam Harrison. I'm one of the practice leads at IntelliJ for intelligent process automation and I think it's really important straight away to explain what we do because it's a little bit different. Our focus is principally on users and processes. Customers come to us because they want to do a number of things get their current setup reviewed, and they want some advice on how to improve the processes. That's to make them more efficient, to make them less clunky, and make them more reliable. That means that you can spend more time doing what you're supposed to be doing. We take away the noise of paper processes and manual tasks with nice, easy to use tools that are natural, and they take the load off users. And that's a great way to start your digital transformation. These paper-based forms or Excel-driven processes, they're unreliable, they're clunky, difficult to maintain. There's often only one person who gets how it works and the data is duplicated all over the place, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We can give you the tools that are easy to use and easy to maintain. And that means intelligent automation is great for reducing the risk which comes from all these manual steps. We can give you deep visibility into how your business functions. We can identify bottlenecks and we can identify elements for improvement. And we put people front and center. We listen, we analyze, and we build, and we strike the right balance between the technology platform, between the requirements of the business, between budget, and many other factors, just to get the right balance. Now, these solutions can take on a lot of different forms, and we adapt easily to different technology, but broadly, we work with advanced workflow, automated document generation, mobile apps and forms, and we also get to play with the fun stuff. Robotic process automation, 
machine and process intelligence. We can stay right at the cutting edge, and that means you can stay right at the cutting edge. This means we're able to offer you solutions that you wouldn't normally see. All the things that are not covered by out-of-the-box software. Project provisioning, spend approval, complex regulatory processes like freedom of information requests. But today, we're going to focus on a particular one of these. Now, we worked with a civil engineer and groundworks contractor. They've got multiple sites in the UK. And one of their key processes in the business is making sure that the right materials were at the right site at the right time. And that makes a lot of sense, really. To get the work done, they need, absolutely need the materials. This process is part of the lifeblood of this organization. Now, they appreciated this, but the view was the process is pretty simple, right? Materials get requested by a ganger or foreman. Material orders are placed with suppliers by the back office, and then the materials get delivered. Simple. But the business were tearing their hair out. The gangers were getting really frustrated because it was really difficult to know where your order was, when the materials would show up, or even if the correct materials would show up. That made it really hard for them to plan correctly. In the back office, they were fed up too. They always had the foreman on their backs. They were constantly running around in circles, putting out fires. And as such, the process was suffering more and more. It was a vicious circle. And all for what was a simple process. The thing is, it's never that simple. A process is only as good as the system that supports it. So we worked with them to map out their process. And that simple process looked a little bit more like this. Put yourself in the gang of shoes, or boots, I guess. You need some materials for the next phase coming up in a couple of weeks. You need to make sure that these are coming in. And you need to know exactly when, so that you can make sure that you guys have something to do. If not, you're either losing money or manpower. So you go and find yourself a quiet spot with a reception, and you ring up head office to request the materials. Luck is on your side today, because someone picks up, and that someone is also someone who can help you. So just switching over to the buyer now, they're in the middle of something. Everyone's always in the middle of something, right? But they're in a good mood, so they pick up the phone, and it's one of the foremen from Fetter Lane. You don't have the spreadsheet open right now, and last time you checked, Debbie had it locked. So I'm going to need to write down the request on a post-it note and save it for later. The phone's hung up, and from the ganger's point of view, it's done. The material should show up in two weeks. That's the standard lead time. If not, it'll have to chase. Back in the office a few hours later, Debbie's out of the spreadsheet, so our buyer can put in the material request. They put them in as separate line items into the spreadsheet. Then remember to save it, and then remember to check it in. Then, as part of the day-to-day -day work, they consult the spreadsheet, pull material requests from the same suppliers, place orders for, and for special orders, or if a supplier contract was up, they need to go through a request for pricing. And that process needs input from at least three suppliers, and the purchase would need to be approved at the next manager's meeting. Then, as they got information from all the suppliers, they would update the sheet. Or if things were taking a bit long, or if a particularly pushy gang I kept ringing up, they would chase suppliers and update the sheet. So we'd mapped out that process, and our next step was to highlight the risk. So risks are the point in any process where things could go wrong. Now Murphy's Law being what it is, if you repeat a process enough times, the risks will go wrong. Risks we identified were patchy reception affecting the call quality or even the possibility of a call. Now this led to orders being placed late or orders being placed incorrectly. Then the manual collection of the material request, that was really error prone. It increased the chance of the wrong order being placed and or wasting time going back to the foreman for the order again. Same for the data entry into the sheet. This was a bottleneck and in a team of five buyers, only one could have the sheet open. So they'd often have to wait. These bottlenecks also affected the visibility of the information. When it came to knowing when an order would show, only one person at a time would be absolutely certain that they had the correct information. When it came to chasing late orders or an order confirmation, it was often responsive. The gangers with the loudest voice generally got the best service. These follow-ups should have followed a logical process. They were all 
time limited. But the logical process was pretty much ignored by everybody in favor of a system of, I've got to do this because I've got to get them to shut up. Now, all of this took away time and it reduced the quality of the core role, which was making sure we get the best price and service on material orders. So once we'd highlighted these risk points, we set about recommending an approach. And a good general rule is to get a system to take care of the risk points. That ensures the integrity of the process and also takes the pressure off the people whose role intersect with that process. And with that in mind, we considered the user experience. So the start point of this process is on site. There's no point looking at anything that needed access to a PC or good reception. None of that could be relied on in the field. So we went a mobile route. Now, you don't need anything more than the phone for this, any phone. And the tech we used essentially gives you the opportunity to create a mobile app. It's a mobile app platform. So we created a customized company app with no code at all. The great thing about this is it didn't it just go to the material order process, it could expand to other processes and it uses the phone's hardware. So for example, if we did need to clock in or out, it could probably tell where we are by using the GPS on the phone. Or if we needed to fill out an incident report or do some sort of survey, we'd use the phone's hardware to gather information, get an image of what's going on, get a video of what's going on and connect it up to the report. So from a ganger's point of view, there was no need to find a quiet spot. All you needed to do was whip out the phone and all the data would be synced back to the head office. Now, because we know what sites the gang was working with, he gets a list of his sites and then it's like a shopping basket. You get to add a line item and based on SharePoint data, we're able to say whether that's the sort of material, what the subcategory is, and then get a bit of free form so that they're able to be more specific about exactly what it is they want. So once you do that a few times and you can add as many line items as you want, it's just a case of submitting it. There's no worries about connectivity there. You submit it and if there's no connectivity right now, it goes into an outbox and waits until the phone's actually connected so that gets all sent off. If not, the, the gang can save it as a draft and come back to it later when they've got more information. Key point there is no matter what, you're guaranteed that the data goes back to the back office. So that was a field interaction mostly sorted, and that took away a huge amount of noise straight away. Then we moved on to sorting out the back office and the sheet. So you might recognize this. This is Office 365, standard SharePoint, pretty much out of the box. Some of you might not recognize it because you don't know, haven't seen SharePoint before. Some of you might not recognize it because you don't recognize SharePoint. You haven't seen it for a while. It's got a bit pretty recently. So SharePoint's really great for producing portals and bringing together data and documents. Really good collaboration platform. What we here have here is a page and that's got an overview of the metrics involved in the process. So we can see if there are any order queries. We can see if any RFP responses are required or have come in. We can see if there's any deliveries out and we can track any new requests that are coming in. It also gives us multiple views of the data. So with the material requests coming in, we can chop and see those in any way that we want. So this is by site, this is by ganger, and we can chop that data up in any way that we want at all. We also had a workflow working with this to pull out individual line items from the material requests and put them into order, an order database. Now that meant that that could be properly dealt with. And again, you can chop that data and look at that data so that it means the right thing to you. So for example, here we're seeing the orders by what request ID they come from, but also by what their status is. So we can keep a track on whether anything's going wrong. In that process, the RFP also got automated so that bringing data to that management meeting was much more automated process. The, the approval of that process became much more convenient. And the decisions and all the reminders happened much more smoothly because automated emails and tasks kept everything running more smoothly. 
And all this data as well gets fed right back to the Ganger's mobile app, so they don't need to ring up and chase anymore. Now, like I said, we built that in Office 365. Office 365 has a massive range of functionality. All your Office tools, Word, Excel, etc. Also a load of collaboration tools like Yammer, Teams, and SharePoint, as you've just seen. And then there are also low code process automation and design tools like Power Apps and Flows. But for this project, we use Nintex, which is an advanced process automation platform. Well, these were advanced needs. It was a complex process and mobile integration was absolutely imperative. There was also a need for no code at all. We needed to be able to pass on this application to the guys there so that they could carry on their digital journey, their digital transformation, and keep on adding apps to it. If you think about it, these guys managed to save a significant amount of time and money, reducing risk and making their users happier, just by automating one simple process. In any in, in the industry, there are loads of these sorts of processes. And we've gone through material supply chain, but what if you could clock in and clock out in the same app? What if you could report an incident or complete a site survey? What about insurance com ensuring compliance too? All the other rules and regulations. What if a client wants to change something on a project? Or what if you need to change something because of information you didn't have at the start of a project? Is that properly logged? Is it properly assessed? Is it charged back? These little things, they all represent the lifeblood of your business, and yet most people see them as a distraction from real work. So they get less attention, and then mistakes are made. Add it up, and it's a lot of time, money, risk, and dissatisfaction. We got them started on one simple process, and now they've got their digital transformation well underway themselves. On that, I'll pass back to Andrew. Thank you, Dan. Um, so, Hopefully that was uh, exciting for you to see. Uh, what I'd like to just briefly talk about now is how we went about conducting ourselves with that particular project uh, and just outline the, the approach taken. So IntelliJ tends to work with our customers in a very highly collaborative and iterative nature. Uh, we are afforded the luxury of doing this because the tools used are, as Liam said, no code or at worst a low code solution. So this allows us to do rapid application development for example, the design canvas is a is a design is a, sorry is a, is a drag and drop approach with configuration um, rather than development. There are some nuances that need to be thought through, and experiences helps here. But the biggest challenge is getting the requirements right. So we tend to work very closely with the SMEs, um, find that's key, and running early proof of concepts uh, with the understanding that this will be something that will get optimized over time. So we run through an analysis stage, looking at the business needs. We think about the user journey and the technology footprint that's going to be required. As I said, the building is really about rapid prototyping, building a proof of concept uh, in an agile fashion and iterating it uh, according to the, the different needs, giving feedback, getting feedback from the subject matter expert, expert, experts as well, and tailoring it as required, and producing quick releases. The deployment is is key as well. So you can't get a successful project to be adopted without thinking about the end users and helping them uh, uptake the system. We have to think about support and the health of the system as well. So we have a complete project life cycle that's available to you should you, should you wish to engage with us in the future. And lastly, I think it's just as going on again from the point that this is an initiative process if if the business processes change in the future these tools allow us to make some easy rapid changes to the, to the system they are not development um, long waterfall processes and they can be changed um, relatively easily so hopefully uh, uh, it's just a whistle stop tour of what's available um, but hopefully your appetites have been whetted today with some of the technology on offer. We'd like to offer anyone on this call the opportunity to meet with some of our top process people to see whether this is something um, that is suitable for your business. So please feel free to use the feedback form at the end of this webinar, or indeed just contact me directly on the on the email you can see in front of you uh, just there. Um, so yes, just goes to say thank you very much for attending today, and uh, we very much look forward to hearing from you in the future.